Yo guys, what's going on? Blossom is back and welcome back to another episode of Sub Drive. Today we're going to do a little refresher on a video I did earlier on in the year. In fact, at the start of the year, and that is going to be reviewing and ranking every single manufactured carbon fiber that has been released in Top Drives. Obviously, I'm giving this video a little bit of an update. I'm giving, you know, some highlight to some of the new carbon fibers where Hutch has decided not to give a special thumbnail to yet. So I made some placeholders for Acura, Honda, Suzuki, and Subaru don't forgive me about the infinity one I made the infinity thumbnail thinking that infinity never had a carbon fiber but when I added in the pictures into the tier maker I found out that they did uh, it really just goes uh, to show um, how irrelevant the infinity carbon fiber was before JPT because I forgot that one even existed and that's why I decided to go and make my own placeholder that being said though these cars don't have their own special pictures yet uh, unfortunately and I don't know why considering that you know Subaru Brew has you know some of the most cars in the game for a manufacturer now uh, but usually when a Honda or an Acura or a Subaru carbon fiber comes out you will see basically top secret testing so I decided to make some placeholders just to represent JPT as you know an event uh, as an update as well so here are the tiers that I'm gonna have for all of the carbon fibers the first one is worth the buy these are gonna be packs where whenever they come out I would always back you to open them if you want to open them go ahead because these packs are going to give you bangers they're going to give you cars that are going to help you and your garage in the long term uh, you know they're gonna get there they either have specialists or great all-rounders or just fantastic legendaries these packs are gonna be worth to buy in the next rank we have worth to try these are cars where there are a lot of hits and a little bit of misses so more hits than misses a lot of great cars but maybe a little bit of duds in there uh, next up is going to be pretty dry these packs are hit or miss it's about 50 50 both in handful amount so there's gonna be a handful amount of really good cars but also a handful amount of really trash cars so that's why it's pretty dry when you open them you really don't know what you're gonna get it's either something really good or something really bad or just something meh you know what I mean uh, next up is going to be Psy these are packs which have more misses than hits they still have some really good cars in them but the majority of the cards that you're gonna pack from cars that I rank under Psy are gonna be disappointments and last but not least it's I'd rather die these are packs which are absolute hot garbage um, and really the only reason why it's not called hot garbage is because I want everything to rhyme and I'm so happy that everything rhymes uh, you know you should never open a pack uh, that falls under I'd rather die unless you specify uh, and specialize in that specific manufacturer. But without further ado, let's get into ranking. We're gonna start off once again with the Audi carbon fiber. Now let's look at the Audi carbon fiber real quick. What can we get from the Audi pack? Well, first of all, uh, we do have some pretty high highs. You know, the RS6 is always a fantastic car to get. Even after the nerf, the RS6 is still a fantastic car. It has great MRA, a relatively low zero to 60. Um, it is low zero to 60 if it was like RQ79 or 78 but because it's 86 I would say a relatively low 0 to 60 handling isn't too good but the MRI is good the top speed is high and it has four wheel drive and the estate niche right we have cars like the Audi R8 Keeper. I was going to say banger and keeper at the same time when it said keeper, but no, keeper. Um, we have, you know, the, RD, the Audi RS3 Sportback. It is a hot hatch, one of the best hot hatches that you can get. Unfortunately, it has no MRA, but outside of that, it's still a pretty good car. The bad thing about the Audi carbon fiber is that there are a lot of epics in here that are just genuinely garbage. I'm sorry, Enqui, if you're watching for the second time because, you know, I said this the first time in the first video, but, you know, cars like the RS2, the S4, the TTS, you know, all these epics are really just filler. Um, you don't really need any of them. Like, okay, for example, the RS4 event, right? I have this, I have this max because it won me the Peugeot FAP. Ever since the Peugeot FAP finals, which was on the 4th of July, I have not used it once. I have not used it once. So, you know, a lot of hit and misses here. Uh, definitely a decent pack. It has some highs. Like, you know, once again, you have one of the best diesel cars in the game. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's a hit and miss kind of pack. There are some highs. There are also some lows. And when it comes to the ultra rares, really, you don't want any of them at the end of the day. So, 
I'm gonna put it as a pretty average pack. Next on the list is going to be Chrysler. Let's have a look at Chrysler. Can it be better or can it be worse? Um, even with the addition of American Frontier, the epics, like the highest epic you can get is RQ72, and it's a rear-wheel drive standard tire car. When it comes to standard tires, you need, it's crucial to have four-wheel drive. Unless you're the Cadillac 16 and you're a specialist in the drag, it is crucial to pair four-wheel drive to standard tire cars. So the Nassau isn't very good. Ever since American Frontier dropped, never used it once. Firepower, once again, just not good enough. It's a bit of an all-rounder, but in a bad sense. So let's look at the Altraverse. Is there any saving grace here? The Citadel. The Citadel, I would say, is a fantastic ultra to pull, and the 300C Hemi is a pretty good one as well. But everything else really is more meh. You know, some of these cars do have MRA, but they don't really handle, and they're not really dragsters either, because their 0-60s just aren't as low as a TVR Tamora or a BTR or a Charger 3. So really, when it opens a Chrysler Carbon Fiber, you're really only looking for the Citadel or the 300C Hemi. And the 300 to see Hemi is a pretty niche car so at the end of the day it's one pack you, you see where I'm going with this it's not Sai it's a I'd rather die let's be real uh, next up on the list now is Ford now Ford I only have great things to say about Ford let's look at the Ford carbon fiber real quick so where's where where's Ford here it is okay so what can we get from Ford we can get one of the best American legendaries in the game non prize I, I believe that this is the highest RQ if you discount the NSX because this has better on paper stats than the NSX. The NSX is only higher in RQ because it has four wheel drive performance. But if it's in the dry setting, this is the best one to use, unless you know slicks. Uh, and then we can also pull one of the best American test bull cars in the game. Not only American test bull cars, one of the best test bull cars in the game, period. Obviously, I'm not counting prize cars, that wouldn't be fair. Amazing MRA, amazingly high top speed. Outside of those two legendaries, a lot of bangers still, right? We have the slick beast, the epic slick beast. We have the highest handling epic non prize car in the Mustang GT4. You're also getting the Mustang FR500. Another epic that surpasses 100 handling and this one also has 90 uh, 90 MRA with a 0 to 60 of under 4 seconds. So you get Slick Beast, you get a testable beast, you get one of the best American performance cars, if not the best American performance cars, another Slick Beast, so 3, uh, you also get the Ford Fusion, so you know throwing in some 4 wheel drive standard performance that handles really well. Uh, you're also getting the SVT Cobra, which uh, to be fair, with the introduction of the Emerge from JPT, it brings down the value of the SVT Cobra a little bit but at the end of the day if it's an American event this is still a great bargain because you're getting 99 handling for only 68 RQ you're also getting the Ford Raptors right the SVT uh, the 150 SVT Raptor as well as I think this has the exact same name yeah oh no SVT F-150 Raptor so really good bangers and when it comes to the ultra rares the bangers don't stop you're getting one of the best four-wheel drive you know British cars um, that is ultra rare you're getting one of the best SUVs um, you're getting a really good off-roader, a really decent Ford Mustang, a really decent performance tire, Ultra Rare as well. Um, you know, you're getting a really, you know, really good bangers here, you know. Uh, once again, the Ford Mustang GT, great bang for your buck. I mean, as you guys know, 5.079. This car is so underrated for its RQ. Great medium car. You're also getting, you know, some low RQ off-road four-wheel drive cars that handle pretty well. This handles better than the Nissan Xterra, I think, which is higher in RQ that came in JPT. And as we all know, when it comes to off-road and top drives, handling matters the most. So the Ford Carbon Fiber has so many high points, I can only give it the highest of ranks, giving it worth the buy. Next up on the list is the Land Rover Carbon Fiber. I think this is called a V8 as well. So this one, right? The 5.0 V8. Most people that have this max had it maxed as an ultra rare. So that's a pretty decent one to pull, but it's only decent when you max it out, which isn't a really good investment for an RQ65. Next up on the list is the Defender V8. Now this one's a really good pull, but at the end of the day, all of the ultras suck, and the legendaries are hot garbage as well. Both of them RQ80, basically. This one's 81, I don't know why. It used to be 80, um, but in my opinion, that still deserves to be 80. They're both really weak legendaries. I'd rather die. Next up on the list is the Mercedes Carbon Fiber. Now, I'm gonna put it inside. Hear me out. Much like the Audi Carbon Fiber, the Mercedes Carbon Fiber is 
filled with fillers. A lot of epics that can't really make much of an impact. Once again, Road Wheel Drive Performance Standard, uh, sorry, Road Wheel Drive Performance Standard, Road Wheel Drive Standard Tires isn't going to help you too much. And a lot of the epics here don't handle, right? 77, 77, 79. I mean, for epic performance, those numbers are really, really sad. The great takeaways from this pack is going to be the SLS Roadster, um, the Maybach, and I guess maybe some of the Ultra Rares are decent. The SLS Black Series isn't too bad, to be fair. And some of the Ultras, like the G36 is really good. Um, the Maybach Long Delay is really good. And the S63 is decent. But at the end of the day, like I said, it's like the Audi Carbon Fiber. It has so much filler. And the highs in the Mercedes Carbon Fiber can't level the highs from an Audi carbon fiber. So, you know, from that no uh, logic, I have to put Mercedes under Audi. So that's going to be Psy. Next up on the list is going to be Chevrolet. Now, Chevrolet is worth the try, baby. The Chevrolet pack is fantastic. I would say it's one of the best packs. I would say it's the second best manufactured carbon fiber that you can get that doesn't grant you a legendary, okay? So Chevrolet carbon fibers, they are usually cheaper than the other ones because usually when they don't uh, have a legendary that you can pull, Hutch would make the pack 1499 instead of 1599. So that's one plus. But what really is the main selling factor for Chevrolets are the cars that they have, right? They have amazing hybrids, you know? Cars that handle really well with low zero to 60s like the Z06, like the Grand Sport, like the Lincoln Felter, all fantastic epics, performance tire epics. The Ford has the slicks, the Chevys have, you know, the performance tires. Um, and then outside of that, you have some really great low end as well, like the Murray. The Murray is fantastic, one of the best RQ65s in the game. And don't even get me started with the Ultra Rares, right? You have the Trailblazer SS. This car is aging like fine wine, you know? It has withstood the test of time, as I've said so many times on the channel, because it still is the best. SUV uh, all surface tire car for the quarter and the half mile in the ultra rare ranks. I mean, the fact that this thing has been in the game since the start and it has with, with it has held that crown until today is ridiculous. It has withstood two American updates and it's still one of the best in its category. Obviously, the you know the Colorado needs no introduction. The Aerovet needs no introduction. They're all fantastic cars. The Grand Sport is decent. The Cobalt is decent. One of the best front wheel drive American. American cars in the game. To be fair, the Chevrolet pack is worth the try. The only thing bringing the Chevy pack down is that it doesn't really have a legendary for you to pull. So there's a bit of that wild factor taken away, but at the end of the day, it's a very solid pack with a lot of, I guess, torso, a lot of breath, you know, is that, is that, is that a way to say it? Um, next one to talk about is Citrion. <laughs> Citrion, 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 I'd rather die. Uh, there really is nothing much that you can get from the Citrion carbon fiber, is there? Um, let's have a look at it real quick, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's what? It's it's one epic and one ultra. That, that's it, man. Like, that's it. Uh, moving on now is going to be Dodge, baby. And like I said, this is an unbiased review, but Dodge is indeed worth the buy. I mean, I love this pack. There are so much bangers, man. There's so much value in this pack. You're getting one of the highest handling American cars in the game. Uh, you're getting the highest handling uh, legendary non-prize in the game. Only this, uh, the Mustang, <laughs> which is an epic, and the Gumpert, I think, uh, not Enrage, but one of the Gumpert Polos have 94. No other non-prize car has gone over 94 stock. So you are getting one of the highest handling cars in the game, if not the highest handling car in the game, right? You have also great bangers, like one of the best RQ82s, one of the best RQ81s even, you know, the Vipers. The Vipers as a whole are all fantastic because all the Vipers are a bit of the same. They're great hybrids, kind of like the Corvettes, but with better MRA, right? Low zero to 60s, great handling, high top speed, amazing MRA. Most of these Vipers are in the 90s. So, you know, you know, like the, you know, the SRT10 ACR, the SRT10, 10 or you know the SRT 10 or the GTSR concept or you know the other SRT 10 or the other SRT 10 you know all of them handle really well all of them have great MRA and the thing about Dodge is that everything here has fantastic MRA everything you see in the screenshot has amazing MRA besides the Durango but even the, the Durango is pretty good it's a blossom choice it handles incredibly well the 0 to 60 is still very very low so when it comes to you know ironically I never thought I'd be saying this, but the Dodge Durango SRT 
is a twisty car <laughs> for a Dodge. But yeah, everything else besides the Durango has an MRA. I do believe in the 90s. Everything here has the 90s. I think only though the Hellcats. I think this is like 88, something like that. 88, 89, so very high 80s. This is probably, yeah, no, that's in the 90s. That This one I think is like 89 as well, or even 92. It's it's in those ranges, right? It's very, very, very high. Um, and then let's talk about Ultramares. A lot of bangers in Ultramares as well. Um, the M80 is a great niche car. It has two seats and all surface tires. Not a lot of cars have four wheel drive, all surface tires and two seats, and is a pickup at the same time. So this is a really good niche to have. Um, the Challengers are decent for City Street's medium. Uh, obviously, uh, we have the Dodge Challenger SRT 392. This is one of my favorite Altruers for the fast circuit. It's the second best ultra rare for the fast circuit only second to the bmw m6 and one of the best dragsters for the rain so like zero to 100 to zero in the rain the 392 are go is going to beat cars like the btr the tamora the charger 3 and that's because the 392 has traction and abs um where does it say it yep traction control and abs where else you know cars like the tamora and the btr the charger 3 although are absolutely fantastic they lack those i guess you know creature comforts uh, or safety features yeah a few safety features but that being said though the Charger 3 it's still in this pack it's one of the best drivers in the game for the drive you have the Daytona which is a beast on the test bowl you have the circuit which is the American version of the Lotus 135 which we all know is a absolutely fantastic pack so with no bias the Dodge carbon fiber truly is one of the best packs that you can open uh, in top drives and therefore it gets worth the buy next up on the list is going to be Fiat Fiat is Psy um, now I know what our people are saying. You know, Fiat is like, you know, it's a 100% of getting the Fiat 030. Yeah, I, okay, yeah. It's a 100% getting a really good ultra rare in the Fiat 030, the Fiat Abarf 030. But when you think about it, the epics that you can get from the Fiat Carbon Fiber, not very good, right? Not very good. You get two epics, I believe. One is the, uh, what is it called? The Dakara, and the other one is called um, the uh, the Abarf, the Slick Tire, the 124. Just not very good. You know, those epics aren't key. They're not gonna help you in a lot of situations. And the A-barb is good, but how worth it is it, huh? That you wanna spend $15 for a guaranteed ultra rare that isn't even a Blossom Choice. It's good, it's really good, but it's just not Blossom Choice level. And there are still better cars that you can use. Like if you wanna use a twisty car, you know, don't use the 030. You wanna use a 340R, you wanna use a Dragster, use a Charger 3 or a TBR Tamora. But anyway, let's look at Fiat real quick. So we have yeah, the Delara, not the Dakar. Delara, I think I'm saying Dakar because I just wanted the car and the 124 Spider. So not a very good looking pack if you asked me. Uh, moving. On now is going to be infinity one of the new boys now before jpt i ranked infinity as Psy. now with jpt i'm going to rank infinity as drum roll please is not moving it's still Psy. now hear me out with infinity okay so when you think about it infinity before was already Psy. so where, where is infinity in in the old ranking system you know they had a lot of really trash grade epics and you know the altruers were kind of just meh you know, there were some really heavy hitters, like the G37, that's a fantastic car to pull. Or the QX30, that's a fantastic car to pull. But before JPT, all of the epics were trash. You didn't want any of the epics, and there were no legendaries. Now, what has JPT brought to the table? JPT has brought six more infinities for you to pull. The thing is, only two of them are good. So those odds really aren't in our favor. The Emerge E and the Q60 Black S. Those two are shining lights in the pack. But with every, you know, positive, there are more negatives. And once again, road wheel drive standard tires, the M56 is a disappointment. It had its chance to shine in the Viper ACR final, but it was losing to all the four wheel drive Subarus. So the M56 really just shows that if you have standard tires, you need four wheel drive. Once again, the FX45, nothing too special about that. Um, the EX35, nothing too special about that. And then I think, uh, last but not least, the uh, Q50 Red Sport, nothing too special about that. So six new infinities, but four are duds, two are good. Now let's look at Ultra Rares. Any good ones? Not really, okay? So JPT brought some decent, 
uh, Infinity Ultra Rares, but not any of them are actually Blossom Choice level. Like, the Q50S, it's okay. It's a, It looks like a pretty good City Streets medium card, to be fair, but there's still better options out there, right? Um, the Infinity Q60, you know, the 0 to 60 is, you know, kind of okay, not very high. The thing is, it's a bit of an all-rounder. It has 77 MRA, which is one of the best MRA cards for a JPT uh, in the JPT Ultra Rare range, but at the end of the day, the on-paper stats are still pretty weak. 5180 uh, is about the same as this. Yeah, 50. <laughs> the card is RQ50, has better on-paper stats than the card is RQ54. The only reason why it's 54 is because it has better MRA, like one of the best MRA for JPT, but it's 77. That's not saying much. It's still going to be taken to Gapplebee's by the Charger 3, or the Daytonas, or um, the Countach, or the Mura. So, unfortunately, JPT didn't really help Infinity. If, if anything, it made the pack kind of worse. Um, but I guess it kind of gave uh, players a little bit more incentive to open it because of the Emerge and uh, the Black S. Those two are kind of carrying the pack right now. And a lot of people have the Emerge now after the Epic event. So is it really worth it? No, the Infinity Pack gets a sigh. Next up on the list is going to be Jaguar. Now Jaguar is a very strong pack. Uh, let's look at Jaguar real quick. So here we go. What we got now with the uh, McLaren F1 being nerfed, um, the F1 LM being nerfed, we have the CX-75 being I think the best British Test Bowl non-prize. So the CX-75 is fantastic. Oh, sorry, the short tail. That's what I meant. And that's a prize anyway. So this was going to be the best uh, British Test Bowl regardless. So this is a really good one to get. Uh, you're also getting, you know, the SVR, which is a decent off-roader. Um, and then also, you know, really great bangers like the TWR XJS. And of course, the I-Pace. The I-Pace is fantastic. And come on, let's be honest. The XJR 575. It feels like every other update that Hutch releases this car is key all right we just had in the I think the GT series qualifiers one where the XGR 525 was taking all the names and you know we had the McLaren P1 GTR finals where this was key and with the McLaren P1 finals where this was key too. every other event I swear to God the XGR 575 just fits all the niches it's medium it's saloon uh, and then next up we have the Jaguar F-Type Project 7 you know great MRI in this car convertible niche and of course we got to talk about the XJ220 S TWR. This thing is a beast. It has an MRA from hell. Um, and you know, the ultra rares are also pretty good. Uh, you have cars like the XJ 5.0. I mean, it handles okay. I know I said that rear wheel drive standard tires is a hindrance, and it is. It's the same thing with ultra rares. But the problem, the difference between ultra rare rear wheel drive standards and epic rear wheel drive standards um, are that the ultra rares are a lot easier to max out than the epic. So you can. Um, invest in the niche for ultra rares, but really like the, the epic niche, not worth it, not worth your money. Um, and then you also get cars with amazing Amari like the XKR 4.2, the F-Type Coupe. There are a lot of bangers in the Jaguar pack, but that being said, there are a lot of misses as well. Not a lot of misses, but there are some misses, right? Like the XJR um, and the 2003 XJR and the XFS. So there are some misses, but there's definitely more good than bad, and therefore the Jag gets worth the try. Next up on the list, <laughs> <laughs> Lamborghini. Lamborghini is sigh. Uh, honestly, when it comes to the Lamborghini pack, all you want are like the top three Lamborghinis. You want what? The SV, the S, the Centenario. That's it. Everything else, literally hot garbage. One ultra rare you want, it's a Thanos Countach. Everything else is kind of hot garbage. The Miuras were really good and they're still decent, but they're all going to get uh, beaten by the Charger 3 nowadays. Uh, next up on the list is going to be the Lancia Carbon Fiber. Now, the Lancia Carbon fiber I'm gonna put into worth the try but I'm thinking about bumping it up to worth the buy so let's look at Lancia real quick so where's Lancia Lancia over here we got some really good legendaries right like Lancia pack all you think about are legendaries great off-roaders great slick tire beasts with amazing MRA and then you have one dud in the, the new Stratos but that isn't even a bad legendary it still handles pretty well 0 to 60 is still relatively low um, so it's not too bad and also I think it is a relatively lightweight car yes it is um, now what really brings I think the lots are packed out is just the epics. It's just the Stratos. And it's not a very good epic as well. So I think what brings it down is the epic. Because the ultra rares are decent. You do have a blossom choice in the 037. This thing is a 1000% 
keeper. Um, and then you have decent cars like the Integrale Evolution 2 as well. And for some reason, the Hutch likes people to use the Delta Integrale. Like every time there's an event, this car always seems kind of like the Jaguar. This car always seems to fit the bill. Uh, what really brings the Lancia Pack down is just the Epic. There's no bang for your buck in the Epic collection, but decent ultra rare, very strong legendary. I'm going to put it in worth the try. Next up on the list is going to be Lotus. Lotus is worth the buy, baby. Lotus is absolutely fantastic. Everything here is like everything the light touches turns to gold almost. Um, you have cars that are just amazing hybrids, right? They're all specialists. They're all really light. They're all really twisty. They all handle really well. That's what I mean. Not really twisty, but they all handle really well. So they're all great for twisty tracks. And the higher end ones have amazing MRA, right? All of them are still in the hundreds. All these Toyota Camry engines still pushing out MRA in the 100s because Hutch hasn't fixed it yet. Uh, so as long as these Evoras are pushing out 100 MRAs and high 90s, the Lotus Pack is going to stay in God tier because all these Evoras have amazing MRA and then the Exige Cup 430s and the 311 or just the 430s in general are just amazing lightweight twisty cars. It's the same for the Epics, right? You can't go wrong with the Epics. All the Lotus Epics here are just great twisty cars. The only duds I would say would be the Esprit Sport 350 and the Lotus Esprit V8. And it's the same thing with the Ultra Rares. There are really great Ultra Rares here, like the Exige S1, that's a Blossom choice, or the 135, that's a Blossom choice, or the 340R, that's a Blossom choice. Like, there's really, really good Ultra Rares here. You also have some pretty niche ones like the Carlton, they have great MRA, and it's Saloon, and I do believe that it's medium. Yeah, there you go. So the Lotus Pack is absolutely fantastic. One of the best British packs to open, and I would definitely give it as worth the buy. Next up on the list is going to be the Maserati Carbon Fiber. The Maserati Carbon Fiber is a very niche kind of category. Um, there's not a lot of good cars that you can get from it. We can get, we can have a, a quick look at it real quick. As you can see here, once again, one of those packs with no legendaries. Some of the Altrias are decent, like the Quattroporte. That's a very great niche one to have because it's the only Italian standard tire, Italian Renaissance standard tire car. The Grand Caribou MC, eh, it's okay. Um, the Maserati Grand Turismo, this one's actually pretty good to be fair. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the Epics, they're all kind of duds. Like you have to be a Maserati specialist or like an Italian saloon specialist to get any value out of the Maserati pack. So at the end of the day, you can get value out of it, but it's in very niche circumstances. So I'm gonna give it a side. Next up on the list is going to be the Mazda Carbon Fiber. Now the Mazda Carbon Fiber is kind of like a better version of the Fiat Carbon Fiber. The Fiat Carbon Fiber, you have a 100% chance of pulling, you know, like I would say like an eight out of 10 ultra rare, but the Mazda Carbon Fiber, you have a 100% chance of pulling a 10 out of 10. Epic. A decent amount of ultra rares. Once again though, in the ultra rares for Mazda, more misses than hits, but you get cars like the CX-9 with four wheel drive standard tire performance, which are going to be pretty good. At the end of the day, if you want the Furi, get it now. Get it before Mazda gets a revamp, get it now. Because, you know, the Mazda carbon fiber, they did come out on occasion, is a 100% chance of getting a Furi if you pull an epic. When you think about it, it's about 14% chance of getting a Furi, which is a really good epic. Um, next up on the list is going to be the Mitsubishi Carbon Fiber. The Mitsubishi Carbon Fiber is definitely worth the try. Mitsubishi, I have so much respect for this brand, okay? Because imagine this, you have built a defense. Uh, let's say that you were fighting a war and you build a defense in like the 1990s and your enemy comes uh, getting like reinforcements, right? Uh, massive reinforcements in like the 2020s, like in like, like recent reinforcements, like in this day and age. And they still try and attack you and they still lose to your 20 year old defenses. What I'm trying to say here is Mitsubishi are chads, okay? Because they were slapping Subaru around before JPT. And when JPT came and Subaru got a bunch of reinforcements and a bunch of new WRXs, guess what? They made no impact. Mitsubishi is still slapping Subaru around. Like, honestly, Mitsubishi is a fantastic pack to open. You get amazing keeper ultra rares. I mean, at the end of the day, all of the ultra rares are fantastic. You have the Outlander, which handles well for an SUV. You have the Lancer Evo 1, which is basically just a, a low RQ version of the Lancer Evo 4, which is an amazing blossom choice. Both of these are great. And then when it comes to the, the epics, yeah, there's a little bit of filler. Like, this is a filler and this is a filler as well but the highs are just way too high to discount okay the evo 9 and the evo 10 are just absolutely ridiculous 
ridiculous epics. They kill Subarus for a living. That is their job description. We kill Subarus. And they still do it after JPT. The Mitsubishi Carbon Fiber is getting worth the try from me. Now, next up is Nissan. Now, Nissan's is another one where, you know... Does it deserve an upgrade? Does it not? Before JPT, I put it in pretty drive, but let's look at Nissan now. So if I jump into the Nissan carbon fiber, where's Nissan? Uh, it's, it's all alphabetical. It's like, I don't know my alphabets. Here it is. Um, what did Nissan bring to the table? It brung, it brung, it brung. It brung. <laughs> my english it brought an amazing slick tire beast the best jpt packable car in the r390 gt1 race car it also brought the gtr track edition r35 and the zanami nismo z fantastic car nissan has really you know gotten a huge upgrade with jpt but one of the biggest highlights i would have to say is the bluebird this thing is a colorado killer and the colorado still remains a beast this is is fantastic it also beats the rq68 svt raptor uh, so the bluebird is fantastic they also added this slick tire beast which is the nissan sylvia j gtc so at the end of the day with these upgrades i do believe that the nissan does deserve an upgrade nissan is going to be worth the try i just realized that it says worth they try worth the try the only reason why nissan is not worth the buy is because there's still a lot of duds right like a lot of the ultra rares are still like you know it's a bit of a hit or miss situation you know it's a 50 50 like you get cars like i don't know the nismo the 370 nismo amazing you have cars like um the 200SX, amazing. But then you have cars like the old Sylvia, the 240RS. Now this thing is hot garbage. Um, you have cars like the Muranos. The Muranos are hot garbage. So it's a hit or miss when it comes to Altruers. The Epix, once again, it's a bit of a hit or miss. I mean, it's more hit than miss. It's really only the SEMA VIP, which is really trash. But the rest, I would say, are pretty decent. And the Legendaries, once again, you know, the GTRs are pretty weak. Like the, the Juke are pretty weak. The GTR, pretty weak. You know, no MRA, even though the zero 60 is very low but you have some very high highs like the super silhouette the r381 and the zanavi at the end of the day nissan the positives outweigh the negatives now uh, because of jpt and i'm moving it up the rank to worth the try next up is peugeot peugeot is worth the buy peugeot is goat status Pe i hate peugeot but the pack is goat status like i've said this is an unbiased review you're getting some of the best epics in the game like the 306 like the 207 like the t16 r5 these are cars which are just amazing bargains super low rq super high handling low zero to 60 incredibly lightweight the legendaries as well are fantastic you get cars like the ex1 i mean look at the zero to 60 it's absolutely insane and you have cars like the oxia as well as the onyx which have amazing mra so ultimately yes the, the Peugeot carbon fiber is goated. There are definitely more great than horrible. In fact, is there anything bad that you can get from the Peugeot carbon fiber? Like this is a blossom choice. This is a blossom choice. This is a blossom choice. This is a blossom, uh, this is a blossom choice. Like they're all really good. And the really like bad cars aren't even that bad. Like the SR1 is decent. The 907, I would say is eh but it's definitely not horrendous. And when it comes to the Ultra Airs, I mean, like I said, you know, the, the 205 T16 is actually still pretty good. I would say, that I guess the Ultra Airs is one of the weak point, like the 208 is pretty bad, the RCZ is pretty bad, but dude, like you cannot discount all of this. Like this is a blossom choice as well. Like absolutely fantastic. Peugeot's go to. Next up is going to be Porsche. Porsche, I, I genuinely think it's worth the try. Uh, Porsche, like Audi, has a lot of filler as well. But unlike Audi, the high, are even higher right because you have cars like the gt2 rs and the 962 which are absolutely goated legendaries but outside of that you also have fantastic cars like the gt2 rs which has 100 mra or the porsche 97, uh, 917 i almost said 917 but i'm pretty sure that's a pretty cursed way to say it um and then when it comes to epics you have fantastic handling beasts like the 911 gt3 that hits 100 or the rsr or the 911 carrera gts or even the carrera s i'm pretty sure that this one right here yep there you go it hits 98 
handling if you max it out. So you get some really great handling cars in here as well. The Porsche pack definitely is good. There is a lot of filler though, and that's really why it's not getting worth the buy status because there is like, you know, cars like the GT3 and the, the 2016 Carrera and the 911 Carrera S, like all those cars are all fillers, right? Or even this one, <laughs> that one's, this one's really bad. I'm getting nightmares from this from the, I think it was the Yesco finals. Um, but yeah, uh, outside of that, still some really high highs. When you think about it, um, the Mercedes pack has, you know, not very high highs and very high lows. The Audi pack has, you know, a decent amount of lows and highs. And the Porsche pack just has more highs than lows. And it kind of makes sense that Porsche is a rank above Audi and Audi is a rank above Mercedes. Moving on to Renault. Uh, when it comes to Renault, where would I put Renault? I would put Renault as pretty dry. I'm starting to realize that not a lot of cars are under pretty dry. Uh, Renault, you get, you know, some pretty decent ultra rares. The strength for Renault are in the ultra rares. The Epics, you get the Maxi, which is pretty good, but the strength for Renault really is in the Ultra Rays, like the Desire. Uh, moving on though is Roof. I. I uh, roof. I really want to put roof in. I'd rather die. I feel like that'd be too mean. So I'll put it in Psy. Kind of like Lamborghini. They're just a bunch of cars that are very mediocre. Roof doesn't bring a lot to the table anymore because literally every car that you see here has been nerfed in some way, shape, or form, right? This has been nerfed. Uh, this has been nerfed. Um, this has been nerfed. Um, I think this is still a pretty good legendary to be fair. I think that has also been nerfed. The compressor has been nerfed. The PTR2 has been nerfed. So, uh, you know, not very good. Uh, so honestly, at the end of the day, Roof is it's a discount Porsche pack. It used to be a better version of the Porsche pack when Roof first came out, when German Renaissance was new, but now it's a, it's a discount Porsche pack. I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, moving on is going to be the Volkswagen. I'd rather, I'm not, I'm not gonna waste any time. Volkswagen, what you want, Volkswagen CC, TCR. That's it. Everything else, throw it in the bin. Uh, next up is Aston Martin. Now, Aston Martin, I think, is pretty dry. Uh, it's a hit or miss pack. The Aston Martin pack genuinely is a hit or miss pack. You get some really good cars, like the C's, that's Alfa Romeo, Blossom. Uh, you get really good cars like the CC100, the DPS Superleggera, even the Volante is really good, and the Zagato. But everything else is kind of just average. I would say that the V12 is really good, but when it comes to average cars, I would say, like, a lot of the Epics are kind of just average. Average. Like the DB10 is average. It handles well, but the 0 to 60 isn't very good. Um, the handle, the, the MRA isn't very good. And you know, the handling, like I said, it handles well, but it's not fantastic. It's not like Lotus level or Donkavort level, right? Um, you know, once again, the the the, the carbon black edition, uh, Vantage V12. You know, once again, it's a decent car. It's not horrible. It's not good. You know, so Aston Martin, I would say, is an average pack. Moving on is Alfa Romeo. Now, Alfa Romeo, this is a pretty tough one because before, uh, in the last episode, I placed Alfa Romeo. Where did I place it? I do have the video um, on my phone here. I put it as pretty dry, but I was looking at the pack again and I was like, you know what? Maybe I would bring it up a notch because it has the best SUV that you can unpack. It has one of the best saloons that you can unpack. And the Epics aren't too bad, to be fair. I mean, like the Disco Volante is okay. And the AT Spider is okay. I mean, um, they're okay. They're not great. But they're not horrible. They're definitely not horrible. The Alfa Romeo 4C is meh. Uh, when it comes to the Ultra Rares, though, this is what brings Alfa Romeo down a bit. The Alto Delta is amazing, but outside the Alto Delta, everything else is just eh. You know, like this one, there are better options like the Lancia 037. It's okay, but the 037 is better. Like this one, it's a great car for the slalom, but the 340R is better. Even the 135 is better, and that's a lower RQ. You have cars like the Mito, very low 0 to 60, but the handling is you know, they're just very average ultra rare. So I really, I'm really, I don't know. If anything, it's a top tier, pretty dry, maybe borderline worth the try because the highs of the Alpha Romeo pack are really great. Like at the end of the day, I know this is RQ80, but I think that this is one of the best RQ80s that you can unpack. At the end of the day, I'm gonna leave it as pretty dry, but we'll acknowledge the fact that it's one of the better pretty dry packs, okay? So it's like borderline worth the try and pretty dry. Next up on the list is going to be Bentley. Bentley, bit controversial. I'm, oh, that was my OBS. I'm going to put it as pretty dry. Okay, so Bentley, uh, it, mm, I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. A lot of misses when it comes to Altraers. Literally every Altraer is a miss besides the Brooklyn's, the Blue Train, 
and butter. Those three are great. Everything else is a miss. Let's look at Epic's once again, a lot of misses, but you have very high highs in the Bentayga, you have a high in the Flying Spur, you have a high in the Continental GT Speed Coupe. So those are some three really good cars. And let's look at the legendaries. The Bentaygas are all really trash, but you do have the best, it's not very good, but it is the best British saloon um, that is non-prize. And you do have some pretty decent legendaries, like the Deadpool, the 24, uh, or like I call the Deadpool Bentley. It's actually not that bad. And you have the Continental GT3, which is actually a very strong legendary. So I would say that the Bentley is carried by its very high highs, but is definitely a pretty weak pretty dry carbon fiber pack if that makes any sense. Moving on is BMW. BMW once again is pretty dry. Um, a lot of filler, you know, kind of like Mercedes, a lot of filler, but it's, I would say kind of like Mercedes, but more like Audi, a lot of filler epics, but the highs in the BMW pack are very high. You get some really great German saloons in the M5s and the i3s are pretty good. Uh, the M2s are pretty good. And you know, like in the ultra rares, you get some really great bangers like the BMW M6 convertible. So with that said, it's gonna be pretty dry. Dry. Last but not least is the Cadillac Carbon Fiber, and the Cadillac Carbon Fiber is going to get a pretty dry rating. You get some really great cards like the CT6, the ATSV, and the Cadillac 16, but you also get some really low lows like basically any other Cadillac Epic. Actually, to be fair, the XT5 is actually decent, uh, but at the end of the day, I think that the Cadillac pack is a pretty average pack. It's solid because, like I said, the, the 16 and the CT6 really carry the pack. The ATSV as well, fantastic one. But now let's talk about the new ones that we've added. So the first one is Acura. Um, now we all know where I'm going to rank Acura considering how I treated the SLS GT3 finals. There isn't anything good from this. The only like shining lights in the Acura pack would be one ultra rare in the NSX, one epic in the HSC, and one legendary in the DNX. And even in the DNX, some people have said that it's, you know, hot garbage. And, and I would make it an honorable mention for the Acura TLX as well. But everything else is really useless and the epics are really low lows like these epics aren't just like mediocre epics these are hot garbage epics these are trash gear aid epics so with that said i'm gonna put the acura si you know there's some good things about the pack but the lows just outweigh the high. Next up is Honda. Honda is I'd rather die. I don't even need to review this pack. This pack doesn't even have epics. So yeah, uh, we just added it for the ride. Next up is Suzuki. Suzuki is God tier, bro. Suzuki, in my opinion, is the best pack. It is the best pack because the Ford pack, although it's like 90% good, there's still a little bit of bad. The Dodge pack, although it's like 90% good, you still get cars like the Caliber and the Nitro, which are horrendous. The Lotus pack, although it's like 95% good, you still get some pretty trashy ultras in here, but the Suzuki pack, the Suzuki pack is God tier. If I could make it a tier above, it would be a tier above. The Suzuki pack is, uh, maybe I'm overhyping it, but let's have a look, okay? Let's have a look at the Suzuki pack real quick. So where is Suzuki? It's at the end, boom, okay? Let's look at the ultra rares. Four wheel drive standard that handles well, medium ground clearance. Medium ground clearance, high handling, lightweight, great hand, I already, I already said high handling, slick tires, uh, fantastic car, medium ground clearance, uh, and then you have the C2, another blossom choice, right? Super low to the 60, decent handling, and a lightweight ultra rare. Now let's look at the epics, okay? The GSX, you have the concept tag, you have the convertible tag, it handles pretty well, and it's lightweight, and last but not least, the Hayabusa. You're getting 99 handling, low zero to 60, and incredibly light. Wait, there is no, I mean, I get it. There's no legendary, but there is no pack that can be released that can say that it has a 100% keep rate, no matter what you pull. The only pack that can say that is the Suzuki pack. Literally, every card that I would pull from this that's ultra and above is a keeper. I would keep duplicates of the 4x4 Kizashi. I would keep duplicates of the C2. I would keep duplicates of the Ignis. I would keep duplicates of the GSX. I mean, to be fair, I won't max duplicates of the GSX, but it's a very niche car. It has the concept tag, has the convertible tag. It handles pretty well. And of course, we have the Hayabusa, very lightweight. It's like the Japanese Donkavort. Don't get me wrong, okay? It's not going to beat a Donkavort, but it is the Japanese Donkavort. It's fantastic. And you have to agree with me as well. Any ultra you pull from this pack, 
you would keep. The Suzuki pack is goated. It is worth the buy. And when Suzuki packs come out, you best believe that I'm gonna buy every single one as well. Next up on the list is Subaru. Subaru is sigh, bro. <laughs> so like I said in my analogy, man, like imagine this. Mitsubishi has had a defense that is 20 years old. Subaru has gotten reinforcements from like, you know, last week, right? With the newest tech, uh, the newest weapons, and they try and tear down that Mitsubishi defense and they still can't do it. Subaru, it's a bit of a sad story. Imagine getting a revamp, but they're all still worse than one Mitsubishi Evo. In fact, two. The Evo 9 and the Evo 10. It's like the king and the queen, right? Uh, the Subaru pack, uh, I don't know, man. It has a legendary, I guess, which is a saloon tag, which is decent. So, you know, for that, it's not I'd rather die. But literally, like, it's the Subaru pack is like the Japanese version of the Mercedes pack. It's just a bunch of filler Japanese cars that won't get you anywhere with a little bit of highs, that's it. Um, and last but not least, oh, it's the Infinity Pack, but we've already reviewed that. So anyway, this is going to be my updated list. Nothing has changed um, from the old one besides Nissan going up, and obviously I've added in the new packs as well. But at the end of the day, this video was a bit of a refresher. I'm sure a lot of people didn't even see my last video on you know my pack review, so I'm posting it again. But anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. I know it's a long one, but hey man, there's a lot of insight in this one. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. I'm gonna stay safe, wash your hands, and consider subscribing. Blossom out. Peace.